To the left hand side for Vieira, who will play it through to Gabriel Jesus, who's in here for Arsenal. Gabriel Jesus to finish it off. Oh, and what a way to do it! Gabriel Jesus seals the points for Arsenal. He's back, and he's back with a bang. Into the penalty area it goes. Gabriel header, and it's into the back of the net. Arsenal take an early lead through Gabriel. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna. The Daily Arsenal Podcast with me, Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast with me, your host, Harry Simiu, coming to you once again from the German city of Dusseldorf, coming to you from my hotel room uh, today. Lots and lots of Arsenal news flying around on social media. We're going to dive into it on this episode. I want to get you guys' thoughts and opinions. Uh, Make sure you get involved in the comments section. I always really, really do appreciate it. And I hope everybody is uh, is having a good Wednesday so far. I have to say, uh, today's been a bit of a struggle for us. We've been traveling around trying to find like great spots to make videos and content surrounding the European Championships, which are are of course obviously still going on here. The problem is that here in Dusseldorf, it has been absolutely chucking it down. And so we're having to find locations where there's shelter, we're having to find locations where there's a good working internet to get these things uploaded and saving us doing one thing and having to come all the way back to the hotel. It's been a bit of a logistical nightmare, um, but it's great fun. I'm glad to be experiencing it and um, and I can't wait to get over to the Germany-Spain game in Stuttgart on Friday. I'm really, really looking forward to that because for me, that will give us a pretty good indication of who could go on and win this competition. The two best teams in it so far, in my opinion, Germany and Spain meeting in Stuttgart. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. But we're not here to talk about the Euros. We're not here to talk about Germany or to talk about Spain. We're here to talk about the Arsenal. And of course, uh, there's a a big story that I do want to get into today. We're going to bring you the very latest on Riccardo Calafiori. We heard yesterday uh, from Italian sources that Arsenal are interested in Riccardo Calafiori. We've heard today that things are progressing quite nicely and I'll bring you uh, the details of those reports very, very shortly. We're going to get into that. Um, What I will say before we we touch on another story, uh, just to to kind of get it out of the way, one that that is quite important but certainly won't get your juices flowing in the way that this one uh, will, is that normally when we get reports from Italian outlets, I'm normally very, very wary. I normally look at the source and there are a fair few on my list of can't really trust you um, (laughs) uh, Italian-based sources. However, what we're hearing about Riccardo Calafiori is not just coming from multiple sources, but it's coming from some of the very best in the business when it comes to transfer news. Uh, Gianluca Di Marzio, who I've been reliably informed, as I mentioned yesterday, by some of my Italian colleagues out here, really is the guy. Um, He's credited as being the guy that made Fabrizio Romano. Um, You know, and and that, that is some feat, isn't it, given Fabrizio Romano seems to have uh, taken a real stranglehold, hasn't he, on the whole um, uh, the, the sort of transfer landscape. But Gianluca Di Marzio is going really, really big on this Calafiori to Arsenal stuff. And that makes me feel like there's at the very, very least something in it. But look, before we get into the Calafiori stuff, let's talk about another story um, that caught my attention this morning. Now, we know uh, that Albert Sambi Lokonga is going to be leaving Arsenal this summer. He came out and said probably about a month ago or so now that he had spoken with people at Arsenal and that it was indicated to him that the best thing for him now would be to move on and would be to go elsewhere. Um, Lots of clubs have been linked. Lots of clubs were said to have been interested, but it feels like Sevilla uh, were the most serious among the suitors. Um, And it looks like Albert Sambi Lokonga is on his way to the Ramon Sanchez Pithuan to join up uh, with Sevilla. According to Fabrizio Romano, a little bit earlier on today, Lokonga himself uh, has given, and I quote, the total green light to Sevilla to proceed with this move. Arsenal and Sevilla 
are negotiating a loan move for the Belgian midfielder. However, it will include a buy clause. And what's being negotiated at the moment is how that buy clause will be activated. Um, Arsenal wanting to make it a mandatory clause. So they want there to be um, a trigger that turns uh, Sambi Lekonga's move into a permanent one, something that triggers Sevilla into having to do that deal. That's what uh, the two parties are negotiating at the moment. So, yeah, um, we're waiting to find out what the details of that will be. But Arsenal and uh, Sevilla locked in those conversations after the player uh, has given his green light, as Fabrizio Romano puts it, to the Spanish club. And it looks like he's going to be playing his football there next season. I think that's a pretty good move for Sambi Lekonga. I really, really do. I looked at him last season and I thought, there's clearly a player there. I thought there was a player there when he was at Arsenal, to be honest with you. And I felt like at times we were asking him to come in and, and do almost the impossible. We were asking him to come in and be our Thomas Partey when Thomas Partey wasn't available. And that was really, really difficult for him. We've seen over the course of last season, as great as Declan Rice was, that it's not easy to do what Thomas Partey does. His skill set is so unique, it's so special, it's so specific, it's what makes him such a fantastic player. And in the end, we had to change things with Declan Rice playing in that position. We had to move him a little bit further forward, slightly to the left, and we had to bring in Jorginho to give us that kind of control um, that, that Thomas Partey can give you. Sambi Lekonga, I think, was always going to struggle to do that. Do I regret Arsenal going out and signing him for, for what they did. From what I remember, it was around about 18 to 20 million pounds. No, I don't, because I think when I looked at him at that point, I thought really talented individual, um, got high hopes for him. He's doing really, really well in Belgian football, um, seems really confident in possession of the ball. And as I say, when he came to England, initially I thought he looked pretty good. And I was excited about what the future was going to hold for him. But as he had to play more and probably in an unbalanced midfield, um, one that didn't really help him, I have to say, uh, you know, his flaws, shall we say, started to be exposed a little bit. And I think it became apparent that he's a talented individual, but probably not the guy uh, that we can rely on to sit at the base of our midfield and really dictate play. So I'm not surprised that Sambi Lokonga's moving on, nor do I regret the fact that Arsenal took that gamble to go and sign him. When you think about the price that we paid, 20 odd million pounds, it's kind of a, a risk worth taking. I have no idea what this buy clause is going to look like in terms of monetary value. But what I do know is that Arsenal was smart to send him out on loan to a place like Luton Town, where he was going to get to stay in the public eye, being in the Premier League. Um, but also a place where he was going to play and he could rebuild his confidence. And he's done that and he looks a better player now than he did 12 months ago. And so that has helped us. That has played a part in Sevilla being interested. And now we've got a move uh, for him lined up. We're not going to get paid for it by the looks of it in terms of that transfer fee uh, initially. But Arsenal are securing some kind of deal or working on securing some kind of deal that means some return on our investment uh, for Albert Sambi Lokonga. Will we be profitable on him? Certainly not. I don't for a second envisage that this buy clause is going to top the £20 million that Arsenal paid for him. Do I think it will even amount to half? Probably not, if I'm being completely honest. But um, I think this is the right move for the player and the right move for the Arsenal. OK, let's move on then to our main story. Let's talk Riccardo Calafiori. Uh, Gianluca Di Marzio reported earlier today, and these are the words, Arsenal, translated of course, are in pole position to sign Riccardo Calafiori and are getting closer and closer to a deal. PSG, Chelsea and Bayer Leverkusen have all been in touch with Bologna regarding the player, but Arsenal have presented a more intriguing project and offer for the player and Bologna. So Arsenal seem to have gone in here and uh, and put something on the table that has made Calafiori look up, take notice. I would add into that that a move to the Premier League will be attractive to most. Um, I'm always wary about Serie A-based Italian players because there is a tendency to kind of stay there and, and want to play their entire careers in their homeland. And why not? They've got a really competitive... 
um, historic league of their own. And so I wondered if a move to Arsenal would appeal to Calafiori over something like Juve or, or Inter or Milan. We certainly know that financially Arsenal are capable of gazumping all of those clubs. We always talk about the financial disparity between the Premier League giants and everybody else in Arsenal, um, having turned over incredible uh, revenues over the last year with their uh, participation in the Champions League again and, and various other bits and pieces, how far they went in it, how far uh, they pushed Manchester City in the league, the prize money from that, TV money, etc. We know that Arsenal are in a good financial state. PSG is somewhere um, that may have appealed to Ricardo Calafiori, it certainly feels like in terms of the way he plays, uh, Luis Enrique may well have been interested, but is that a league you would pick over the Premier League? Not sure. Um, Chelsea is a project with lots of uncertainty around it. Would you pick going to play for Enzo Maresca right now over uh, Mikel Arteta? You don't even know if Enzo Maresca is going to be there in six months, which will always be a bit of a turnoff, I think, for players that are looking to, to find the right project. Bayer Leverkusen have been great, but again, that Premier League appeal um, and, and the size of Arsenal compared to Bayer Leverkusen probably um, was a deciding factor to, for Ricardo Calafiori. From all the reports that we're reading, it seems like he's interested in this move as well. Um, if uh, I look at some of the other reports that are coming out um, on this uh, Wednesday, the 3rd of July, Tancredi Palmieri, the journalist you may recognise from uh pissing off Kevin De Bruyne the other day, uh, has put a tweet out a little while ago, about an hour before I'm recording this, saying, Arsenal close to signing Italy wonder kid centre-back Calafiori. So he obviously feels that this is a deal very much in the making. And Nicolo Shira um, has just put out that Arsenal have reached an agreement in principle with Ricardo Calafiori for a contract that will run until 2029 um, with a salary of around about three and a half million euros per year. I haven't done the maths to figure out what that looks like weekly, monthly, etc., etc. Um, but from all the noise we're getting from Italy, it feels like Arsenal are A, really interested in this and B, have made some progress in convincing Ricardo Calafiori and his people that Arsenal's the right place for him. It doesn't feel like finance is going to be an issue between Arsenal and Bologna. Bologna, who have stated publicly over the last few days that they'd prefer to sell abroad than sell to one of their Serie A rivals, which you can obviously um, understand. One of the big questions, though, that's come out, I think, ever since these links begun to intensify. And let me be clear, I'm not saying this is a done deal by any stretch of the imagination because I don't know that it is and I wouldn't want to say that. Um, I've not heard anything myself. Um, I recognise that I'm a little bit disconnected at the minute being out in Germany with a lot of my focus on the European Championships, but I'm not aware of, of any movement on this myself. But there are some pretty big players in the game um, saying with a lot of chest and very confidently that this is a move that, that is very much on. Deal on Calafiori to Arsenal. We'll have to wait and see, though, if that materialises. But one of the questions, as I was about to say, that I think this has prompted is, where does he fit in at Arsenal? Ricardo Calafiori has been a standout player for Italy at these European Championships. And in a really bad campaign for the Azzurri, you have to say he was the shining light. A real confident defender, uh, stepping out from centre-back, happy to go on those roaming runs forward, a good passer of the ball. Also a very, very competent defender, which is important when you're playing at centre-back. But you look at that Arsenal defence and you look at the stability that we have with uh, David Raya in goal and then Gabriel and Saliba as the two centre-halves sitting in front of him. Ben White being a real part of that stable unit as well. We're quite interchangeable at left-back at the moment. But the question is, where does Calafiori fit into the picture? Because I would be lying and just feeding the hype if I sat here and said, I think that Calafiori is better than Gabriel or Saliba at this current moment in time. Calafiori would not come in as a starting centre-back for me at Arsenal. But what a lot of people maybe don't know that haven't watched Calafiori pre Euro 2024 is that he's actually spent a lot of his career playing as a left back and Arsenal we feel are in the market for a left back now you might say well he's a centre back really so it feels like kind of square peg in round hole but we know that Mikel Arteta prefers 
that profile of player at fullback. It gives him something a little bit different. And it's a big part of his system. It's why Ben White on the other side has been incredibly successful. It's why had he been fit, Jurian Timber would have probably played the majority of last season um, as our left back as well. So, you know, a centre back at left back or a kind of hybrid centre back slash full back is, is something that Mikel Arteta has got previous for wanting and, and previous for going after. So it kind of makes sense there. I think we look at that back line and I've said for a while that the back line is pretty strong when everybody's fit and available, okay, in terms of options, versatility, etc. etc. You look at that right centre back position that William Saliba currently occupies and you think even if the centre-back that I regard right now to be the best centre-back in the world got injured. It wouldn't be the end of the world for Arsenal because Ben White could tuck in somebody that we know is also very com competent in that position. Takahiro Tomiyasu could play there, somebody that we know is also very competent in that position. And the same can be said of Jurian Timber. One of the issues we've always had is on that left-hand side. There have been questions for a little while with regards to whether Jakub Kivior is that guy, the guy that can play second fiddle um, to Gabriel, but also help at left back as well. At left back, did it work? I, I don't really think you can say it worked. I think we got by in certain games, but I also thought there were games where Kivior at left back looked like he was struggling, looked a little bit out of his depth. And this is different because Calafiori's played as a left back if he does move to Arsenal, way more in the past than Jakub Kivior would have done. And we know that Jakub Kivior is somebody that's attracting a lot of interest from Italian football. Juve have been interested. Milan are long-term admirers of the Polish international. And we've heard from various sources that those clubs are interested in bringing him in. So is this a situation whereby you're looking at it and you're going, do Arsenal actually need this? Is this what Arsenal need? Another left back, uh, another centre back, I beg your pardon, stroke left back. And you're probably thinking, it's not quite at the top of my priority list. But it feels like Arsenal are seeing this as an opportunity to upgrade. There's an opportunity here to bring in a better player than Jakub Kivior, allow him to move the other way and part fund this deal. Now, from the figures that I'm reading I'm hearing 40 to 50 million euros is what Arsenal are going to have to pay for Calafiori. Well, if you could get 15 to 20 for Jakub Kivior, you're half funding that deal. And that would ease Arsenal's concerns about, you know, being near the red when it comes to PSR. Not that I think we're near it at the moment and that we have to worry about it anywhere near as much as some of the other clubs. But we know that Arsenal are probably going to need to make a bit of money this summer as well. Now, I think they're looking at this and thinking, Kivior, you've been here a bit now and I'm not really sure that you're the solution, you're the answer. Not really sure you're at Arsenal level. You're at a good level, but are you Arsenal level? Milan want you, Juve want you. Lots of clubs are being linked. Perhaps we can do a deal that sees you go that way, which part funds our efforts to bring in Calafiori and essentially upgrade in that position. Can you imagine how strong our defensive unit would look with Calafiori as the second left centre-back, with Timber White or Tomiyasu being the second right centre-back. You could still make a case that we need a specialist left-back. You could still make that case and make that argument. And I wonder if this would be an alternative to bringing in a left-back. Maybe Arsenal have looked around, maybe Arsenal have tried to find that solution and not found them. I don't know. And that's why they're pivoting to a slightly different thing. Maybe Mikel Arteta just doesn't want to play with conventional fullbacks. And while I'm on the subject of where Calafiori would fit in, it brings me onto a question uh, that I received in the comments on yesterday's show uh, from Team Sparrow, who asked my thoughts on uh, Ferdi Kadiolu, who's been playing in that position for Turkey at the European Championships and has done a really, really good job. What I would say is that Kadiolu, I think, and I'm just going to look this up now while I'm recording, I'm pretty sure he's actually a left back by, uh, so I beg your pardon, a right back by trade. I'm pretty sure he's a right footed player. Is he a right footed player? Maybe I'm wrong on this. Um, hold on a second. Okay, so Kadiolu plays at right back and left back, but he's a right footed player, which is why in my head I'm thinking right back. I quite like what I've seen of him for Turkey, very adventurous, happy to get forward, really confident, 24-year-old. 
But is he Ricardo Calafiori? I don't know that he is. Um, so, yeah, you know, Cadiolo is someone that's caught my eyes at these championships. He's someone that's been linked with Arsenal in the past. We know that. Um, so I'm not surprised to see that name crop up in the comments section. But if I was choosing between Cadiolo and Calafiori, and Calafiori is attainable, then I'm definitely going in that direction rather than in the direction of the Turkish international. And that's no disrespect to him. I just think that Calafiori is a real star in the making. So the deal, according to a lot of sources in Italy, is very much on. I'm still going to stay calm, calma, as they say, uh, and relaxed about this because I don't know um, anything myself about where Arsenal are at on this. But there's some pretty big hitters in Italian journalism um, going really big on this at the moment. And this is certainly one that Arsenal need to keep their eye on uh, or that we need to keep our eye on as fans in the coming days. It would make sense that things are intensifying now that Italy are out of the competition. And if Arsenal have made progress over the last few days, the last few days in which it is the period after Italy were eliminated, then that does make sense too. It adds up. But um, we've been down this road before when it comes to transfer, so I'm always a little bit reluctant to get carried away. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Uh, Ricardo Calafiori, is he the one for you? Where will he fit in, in your opinion? I would say that he'd be coming in as a upgrade on Jakub Kivior, someone that we'd look at as the left centre-back cover, but also someone who could play in that left-back position, who's really confident on the ball, could probably go into the midfield a lot more comfortably than uh, Kivior when he's been tasked with doing it, or Tommy Asu when he's been tasked with doing it. Good defenders, but do they have that all-round game? Probably not. Calafiori, in my opinion, does, and that's why I see him as an upgrade on Jakob Kivior, and a deal that I'd quite, this is a deal I'd quite like to see Arsenal do between now and and the end of the window. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you're watching us on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe if you're brand new on whichever platform it is uh, that you're joining us from. If you're listening on the audio, the reviews really, really do help, guys. Please get involved. Um, again, an apology for the lack of video quality. Um, I am uh, out in Germany, as I've mentioned already, and so um, I'm doing my utmost to keep the pod regular keep it going we're going to bring you a show every single day but that does mean uh, that sometimes the video quality is not quite going to be where it would be if i was at home in uh, my studio but hey it is uh, what it is thank you all so much for tuning in as always uh, and i will see you all on the next one let me know your thoughts and if you've got any questions get them in the comments section below i will see you all on the next one until then take care of yourselves have a great day goodbye